Hey guys, welcome back to Stuff Steve Likes, and uh, today I we were supposed to go camping, but our Suburban had a little issue and we didn't end up going, uh, so I have a day off with, with nothing really planned, so what I decided to do is make a few uh, Christmas gifts, and this year um, we're kind of wanting to forego the usual, you know, gift cards and that kind of stuff, that's all cool, but um, we really want to do something special and unique and something that people don't get every day. So um, what I decided to make this year, since I do a lot of woodworking, is uh, make what's called a charcuterie, or it's basically a small cutting board. Um, I have a larger example here that I just made, and you'll recognize what it is. Basically, it's a cutting board with a handle on it, and um, it's a really great, uh, great little gift because... Uh, especially when somebody's cutting, uh, they can hold the board down, and um, also I'm going to make uh, holes in them and put a put a uh, leather strap through them as well, so that you can hang them up. A lot of times on uh, cooking shows and stuff, you see these uh, being hung up uh, in kitchens, and it's just kind of a nice decoration piece too. But I found this incredible wood at uh, at a place called Wood World, and this is Sinker Cypress, and just look at the amazing grain on this wood. And uh, this particular one, because it's a larger piece, um, this one's mine, I, I'm keeping this one, <laughs> but uh, it just has this really nice, uh, uh, because I book matched this, I basically uh, open it up like this, um, you can see that um, it has kind of this cool V to it, um, and each side uh, goes a different way. Anyway, so that's, um, that's the uh, charcuterie, uh, or cutting board, whatever you want to call it. I call it a rustic cutting board. And I promise you, if you make somebody something like this, they will, they will really appreciate it and know that you put a lot of uh, time and effort into it. And um, what I'm going to show for you today is how to make a smaller one. And uh, those are the ones that I'm giving away to people. It's a, kind of a small cutting board. We have In our kitchen, we have a large cutting board for you know, kind of our main stuff. And then we have a couple smaller ones for, you know, just cutting up an onion or something like that, where you don't want that taste to get into your main cutting board. Um, so that's what we're doing. Uh, like on ours, we cut jalapenos, onions, and other, other, other kind of strong flavored uh, foods on the smaller cutting board. So that's what I'm going to do for these folks, because the people that I'm making it for are uh, cooks and uh, they like to they like to do barbecue and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of times they're working with stronger flavors, and I thought this would be a good um, good gift for them. Uh, so I'm going to put this one down, and uh, this is for a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Eddie, and he's a coworker of mine. He's just a great guy, and he loves to cook. And so this is Eddie's cutting board. I'm going to bring this wood up closer here so you can see it. And just look at the amazing grain on this piece of wood. Isn't that cool? And on the other side, you've got, you know, it's just what, what they mean by sinker is that it's been submerged at the bottom of a river and, uh, you know, for whatever duration of time, 50 years, 100 years, and it's picked up this, uh, all, these, uh, all this mineralization in the wood, and it just really, uh, even, on the, even on the edge of it, you can see how it's, it's, it's really banded. I don't know if that's going to focus there. There we go. See how it's kind of banded and ribbon in there? So uh, really just beautiful pieces of wood. I've got a whole bunch of them here um, with different colorations. And uh, here's kind of a darker piece here. Actually, I may do this. I may give this one to Eddie. This one's got a couple of uh, a little bit darker notes on it. I might uh, I might give him this one. But again, you can see the just the cool grain on this. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this one for him. Anyway, uh, so so that's what we're going to do. And it's it's very very simple to make these. I promise you, it, it you know each one's not going to take you once you get going. Each one's probably not going to take you more than uh, twenty to thirty minutes to do. So in a day, you can you can bust out a bunch of these as long as you have everything cut and and uh, your tools ready to go. So anyway, uh, I'm going to uh, switch to a different shot and take a look at what we do next. All right. Alright guys, we're back, and 
Now what we want to do is we kind of want to look over the piece. These are very, very old pieces of wood. So a lot of times you will run into a few cracks and so forth that you kind of have to work around. Um, so what I'm going to do is look at it here. And I, I did see right here we've got a little bit of a knot, which is fine. Because uh, what I think I'm actually going to do here is kind of bevel the edge. And then I'm going to bevel the edge here because I see a little bit of uh, kind of wormhole right there. And um, so what I think I'm going to do is put the handle end here, and then this will be the top here. So, so that's the next thing you got to do is kind of scope out your piece of wood. So now that you've scoped it out, uh, I'm going to make some marks on it and show you what's next. All right, guys, we're back. What I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, make a mark here. I was going to do it off camera, but I decided to show you this. Um, I want to make the handle, um, and it's not a really long board, so I want to maximize as much as possible. I want to make the handle just long enough for somebody's uh, hand to, to grip it. So I'm going to put my hand here, which is average size, and then make a mark with my pencil there. I'm going to take my square. And I can't see my pencil mark. Here we go. Go across like that. There's my pencil mark. And then this is where this is where you can get kind of um, creative, you know, kind of figure out how you want to make it look. I kind of like this this style handle, like I did on my other one, almost like a triangle. And I would challenge you to I would challenge you to do it by hand. You know, you can go buy something at a store if you want something completely perfect. Um, but people want something that you made yourself by hand. And um, so what I am going to do is just kind of find the midpoint on here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to draw a line here like that. Oh, I really can't see that. Sometimes you actually, on this dark wood, I recommend even getting a marker, uh, like a Sharpie or something. I mean, once you, and my lead just broke, once you work it out, okay, now I can see it. Uh, once you work uh, the wood out and do your final uh, sanding and stuff like that, which I do. Some people are like, no sanding when you're doing hand, uh, hand woodwork. I think that's cool if you can get away with it, but um, I usually do sand considering that I'm giving this to friends. I don't want splinters and so forth. So when I say sand, don't, don't roast me. I'm just, uh, I'm just saying how it is. Um, when you do your final sanding, a lot of those marks will, uh, will get removed. So, um, so we're going to make that mark. And then I'm going to just go out about, a, about an inch or so and uh, mark on either side. And then I'm going to flare it out in kind of that, that triangle shape that I had there. So uh, I've got to resharpen my pencil, and I'll be right back. All right, I resharpened my pencil, so I'm going to come over here and find kind of a kind of center point here, and I'm just going to mark one inch on either side. really hard to see on this dark wood, but I'm going to make it work. Okay, there we go. And then what I'm going to do is just flare out a little bit here. And again, I'm not, I'm not using a, a set angle. I could, you know, I could go in here and do a, a 45, but that's going to flare out way too much. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here. The other thing you can do is measure from the edge. Like if from the edge you want it to uh, flare out to go oh, about here. There's my mark again. Flare out to about here. I'll just do two inches here. 
on either side. So we'll do that two inches, two inches. And see, that's going to get rid of a lot of that kind of little rot stuff there too. So, so there's two inches. And then just come in and make your make your line like that. Here's, your, here's my other line right here. There we go. So if you can see that there, we have our marks to make our little uh, little hand swell there. And you can make it as big or as small as you want. Uh, this one is for uh, a guy that I know, and he's got uh, hands, I guess, probably similar size to mine. So so I'm going to use my hand as a uh, as a reference. But you can do it however you want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get out my saw and uh, make some cuts and it's kind of I don't know it might be considered blasphemy but I actually like to use a hacksaw with a metal blade and the reason is is that the teeth are really fine on it and it just for me it just it has a really nice kind of fine cut it's a small piece of wood I don't want to chip it out and it's an old piece of wood so the same same deal there so um, I'm just going to move my Forgive me as I move around here. I'm just going to move my uh, little sawhorse over a little bit under my pine board, my makeshift workbench, because that's what I've got. And I'm going to move this over so we can see the cut here. Yeah, and all I'm going to do is just make uh, cuts uh, down to here where my line is. get to the end I'll make it vertical here through the wood there we go kind of fish that out a tight tight fit there and then I'm going to uh, go ahead and do the other side you know the other thing I like about this saw is I feel almost just as comfortable sawing like this and whether that's right or wrong it just it just seems to work especially on the downstroke Do a couple upstrokes here. Well, this piece of wood is not cooperating. There we go. It's fighting a little bit. See what I tell you. A little struggle at the beginning, but we persevere. But um, this is a uh, this is kind of an El Cheapo uh, cobalt bow saw that I got here, but it's a pretty pretty good size, and. Um, you know, I think I, I probably paid 15 bucks for it, but it came with a wood blade, but man, the, the wood blades are so, they're just super coarse, and they just tear this wood up. It's good for like delimbing a tree, but not, not for this type of stuff. All right, and then um, I'm going to switch back to my other uh, view here, so you can see what I do next. A lot of guys would saw down here, and you can do that, um, but um, I like to for whatever reason I just like to carve that part of it so um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the other view and show you how I carve that All right. alright here we are so I'm gonna go ahead and carve this part and I've got my Grantsfors Brook wildlife hatchet here get this centered on the camera there we go uh, I got my uh, Grantsfors Brook wildlife hatchet here, 
And as I do every time before I use it, I'm going to go ahead and strop it. And this just is going to get any burrs off of it. And uh, man, I love this strop. It is just, it just makes your blade so ridiculous. It's just, it's incredible. I made it out of a couple belts and a piece of cedar. If you haven't seen that video, um, I do have that on my channel too, but really just, it took me, you know, maybe an hour to make, super easy. Anyway, um, so here we have this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I've already made these cuts here. So the grain stops here, that's called a stop cut. We use it a lot in spoon making. I was just making a spoon blank here earlier and used a stop cut here. And it just keeps, it, it basically what it does is it keeps the grain from splitting all the way down the wood. So I have no fear of this breaking in half. So I, uh, so all I do is come in here and I lift, the, I lift the board up like this and I'll just bring both the hatchet and the board down at the same time, like that. And I usually just take a couple of times, and then go right over here, so you can maybe see that chip off. Might take a couple more times. Let me get my other things off this board, because so they're making a lot of racket. There we go. And a couple more times here. And don't rush it, just, just go with it. And there we go. That chipped off just how I wanted it to. Now that I'm gonna do it on this side, just find my little line that I made. And, and of course, I have this angled, but again, I was just removing material there. So here we go. I'm going to go on this side, just give it a couple of wraps here. You don't have to hit too hard, just give it a little tap. There we go. Because we did that work beforehand, with those stop cuts, we've got kind of a handle on here. So what I'm going to do now is um, I have to switch the camera again. And I'll show you how I actually get in here and do the rest of this carving. You can use a hatchet, you can use a knife. Um, I'm going to use a hatchet for the main part, and then I'm going to use uh, one of my knives to, um, to kind of do the rest of the fine detail and give it some, uh, uh, give it some uh, roundness to the, uh, to the handle here. So, uh, so let me switch to a new angle, and we'll be right back. All right, we have our new angle. This isn't so you can see my face. This is so you can see the wood and what I'm doing here. And uh, my tripod doesn't go that high, so you gotta look up. Anyway, basically what I'm gonna do is come in, and if you can see my other hand is on this side, so there's no way the hatchet's gonna come across and, and cut me or anything. And on this side, I'm gonna have my thumb curled up like that. So basically all we're gonna do is come in and do a couple taps. I'm just kind of breaking the wood away a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my little trash can under here to catch the wood shaving so I don't have to sweep as much later. There we go. You can see that kind of shaping up. following the line that I have on this side. And this is a medium wood. It's not a really soft wood. It's not a really hard wood. Um, so you don't have to, you don't have to uh, 
hit too hard with it. And uh, anytime you're doing any carving, you always want to uh, give it more of a tap than anything. But in this one, I'm going to go down here, move up, and I'm going to start. See, I have a bunch of chips there. Okay, so I'm going to come back then and basically shave those off. And just a little bit more on this side, and then I'll go to the knife. But there we go. And I'm just trying to catch the very edge of that hatchet. I'm not wanting to bite in, to dig in, because it's so sharp that if you're not careful, it will, uh, it will actually. Um, overbite and go too deep and uh, yeah if you guys don't strop your tools you definitely should do it it's a it's a game changer for sure all right let's go on this side now I don't have the line on this side but I do have this cut which is guiding me so see how that that safety cut really is brilliant of course I didn't come up with it I saw it on another YouTube video but um, it, it stops the grain so there's no chance of it uh, chipping out now as you can see that one actually got me basically there that's pretty symmetrical and um, that's what I want so I'm actually not really gonna do much more carving on this guy um, I might do just a touch more right here that's really, that's really about it. That actually worked out really well. And uh, there's a slight, uh, I am actually going to come right in here and do that. Right there. Just tapping. And the reason that the hatchet's great here for kind of the big stuff is that um, it takes a lot less work. You know, a knife might have taken, uh, you know, 20 minutes to do that. So, uh, but anyway, we're, we're pretty symmetrical there. And then I'm gonna, going to uh, go to the knife here. So let me grab my knife and we will get that going. All right, here we go. I've got my knife and I'm using the uh, Mora Keneve 511, and this is called the Basic. Uh, I have a little video on this, a small review. And again, I'm just going to come in and just strop it a few times. This really saves you a lot of work sharpening. Honestly, most of the time we sharpen our knives, and they don't really need to be sharpened. It's just they developed a burr and rolled over. So this the strop just basically... You know, if you think of a knife edge like this, and when we use it a lot, the edge just kind of rolls over, and it's like, man, that knife's dull. It's not really. You just have to bring it back uh, to uh, perpendicular with the with the rest of the knife to make it cut effectively. So, I mean, sometimes we do booger our knives up, and we just have to sharpen them, but the strop really, um, uh, really saves a lot of steel and a lot of time. So, anyway, strop that. Give her the old shave test here. Oh yeah, she's uh, hair popping sharp. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is come in and I'm gonna start on this side. And anytime you're carving, you wanna work with the grain. So if the grain is going this way, you want to cut into it this way. So you would never wanna cut Let's see if I can show you this. You would never want to cut this way on this grain. That's an exaggerated angle. You want to cut this way into the grain or else it'll chip out. It's just, it's hard to describe if you've never done it, but uh, once you do it a few times, you'll understand. But essentially, I'm going to carve into the grain of this knife and just kind of give us a little bit of a round edge. Okay. 
So I'm going to continue to just carve in and make little little peels. I left this pretty thick here, so you can I mean you can get with it a little bit, and you're not going to you're not really not going to hurt anything. And then up here, if you want to cut that those little chips off, you can you can do that, and we'll we'll kind of round all this a little bit as well. So I'm going to just keep carving a little bit, and you just you can lean into it as much as you want. I tend to I tend to err on the side of caution, just to, so I don't take out too much. And then, um, so I'm already starting to round this off. And again, you you don't want it to be perfect, perfect, perfect. You know, unless you're you know unless you're selling these or something like that, and people are expecting that. But you know, these are handmade, hand carved, and people want that kind of that kind of rustic look to it when they know that you've made it by hand. And so that's basically all I'm going to do there. You can see how that's kind of rounded out there. And I've got a scraper I'm going to use on it. And a scraper is a, is basically what predates sandpaper and kind of round that out a little bit more with that. But the knife has gotten me to a basic shape there. I might do just a touch more here. And this side, like right here, I'm going to carve it this way to kind of round it off a little bit. So just just short strokes. And you're saying don't cut towards yourself. Honestly, that's um, good advice for you know a ten year old that's learning how to carve. Um, there are sometimes when carving towards yourself is necessary. You just have to do it safely. This arm is way over here. Hello, my arm's way over here. And the other thing too is the grip that I have, it's impossible if I slip and come back, it's just the handle is gonna hit my leg, okay? So very safe way to hold a knife when you're carving toward yourself is like this. Have your thumb on it. And then just pull toward yourself, okay? You can see what I'm doing here is I'm kind of beveling this side as well. And you just have to get a feel for the grain as to which way it wants you to carve it. And, uh, and that's something you just have to learn. And you'll mess up and be wiser the next time. So, all right, so I've got, that's kind of basically what I want to do there. I'll flip it over and I'll do the same here. Cut that off. And again, we're just getting a, a good basic shape here. And I really like to carve this way with, with, a, with a board underneath it. There's a lot of guys that like to freeform carve in their hands, and I do that as well. But I feel like if I have a, a solid base here to work with, that it's just, it feels a little bit safer to me, and I feel like I have a little bit more control. Okay. So I'm going to carve on this side a little bit, round it off just a touch, just like I did on the other side. This other side, I might go a little bit more like this because it's kind of a thick, thick area here. All right. So that's kind of the basic idea there. And then on these, on this part right here, what I do is I will come over here and kind of cut across the grain like this and then see how that's actually beveled that edge there and then it's kind of gone into here to make that angle that's why I was saying don't worry about these chips because when you come in like that it's going to um, it's going to take care of those chips like that okay so I'm gonna finish up on this I'm not gonna bore you with all of the uh, you know carving that goes into this but it's only gonna take me a few more minutes and I'll have most of this shaped up so I'm gonna stop the video here and that's what I'm gonna basically do all in this area is clean all this up and I'll be right back All right, guys, we're back, and I've pretty much got the most of that uh, basic carving done here. Put my other tools aside, and what I'm going to do is just 
I decided I want to round off these edges just a touch here, right here. And what I'm bringing in for that is my uh, Swedish carving axe here, Grand Swiss Brook. And the reason I'm doing this one as opposed to my hatchet is because it's a little heavier. And is all I have to do is just tap on it. I mean, it's, it's a really heavy carving axe, so I just barely tap on it, and I realize that you're not getting that in the shot. I'm going to raise that up. There you go. Okay, so I'm just going to tap ever so lightly. You can see I'm kind of going about about there on it, and I could choke all the way up and do it too. Okay, and so I'm just kind of beveling this a little bit, and then I'll come at it from this side. And I'm just kind of rounding it like that, just a little bit, just a little bit. That's all I want to do. Okay. And there we've kind of rounded those two out a little bit. You know, we're just kind of kind of angling it back just a touch. Come on this side here. You can see when your tools are sharp, you don't you just barely have to tap and they're going to do their job. And you know, that's that's the main thing I always tell guys. I'm like, hey, you got a knife on you. Is it sharp? Oh, I haven't sharpened it in six months. I'm like, man, you're just asking to get cut. Okay, so we've got those both beveled just a little bit. And I can even come in. I'm going to set my carving axe down. I always have a good, safe place to set your stuff. Make sure it's not hanging off the end of your workbench or something where it's going to cut you. And I'll just come in with the knife then a little bit and kind of clean this up. Both sides. Like that. Okay. Both sides like that. And again, we're not going for perfection. If, if you seriously hand carve something like this and you give it that give it to that person and say hey you know what you're an important person in my life and I wanted to give you something unique and special and I made this by hand using a knife an axe and uh, and other small hand tools the, you might make him cry I mean honestly it's it's you know this society is so you know, we've got our noses in our smartphones and all that stuff. Man, I, I gave up the smartphone. I've got a flip phone. It's just like, you know, I just get get so tired of the, you know, the rat race and the, the dings and the beeps and the, you know, everything else that's vying for your attention. And, you know, when we buy Christmas gifts, we're the same way. You know, we look at the Best Buy ad or the... Uh, ad for uh, Walmart or Target or wherever. It's like, okay, what can I spend? How much can I spend on this person? Well, you know how much this piece of wood cost me? I got four, I think three or four boards out of that piece of wood. The whole thing cost me seven dollars. But actual value, what do you think is worth more to the person receiving the gift? You, know, you gotta think about that stuff too. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not 
trying to talk about the philosophy of gift giving or anything like that, but but something like this is so much more personal and so much more special than you know buying somebody a you know new MP3 player or anything could be. Now that's a great gift, uh, or you know whatever whatever they're whatever they're wanting. Um, but uh, and I always love to give uh, love to give people you know knives and other things for gifts. Those are great gifts too, but. It's not a piece of electronics. It's not a, um, you know, it's not an accessory for their phone or for their uh, iPad or you know whatever they have. It's something personal. Okay, so it came in there, and this will get more detailed as we go. But oh, and I wanted to show you this edge here. I'm going to try to keep as much of this edge as I can. Isn't that cool? Because it's got like a saw. A saw mark on it on that side. It does have a little one on this side too. You can kind of see it, but you know, keep some of those tool marks on there. You know, let them know that this is, you know, you want it to look like it came from a, you know, came out of an old farmhouse or something. And uh, that's a that's just a really cool thing. All right. So we're here, and I've pretty much got that shaped. And I'm going to use a couple more, uh, you know, strokes of the knife and and a few other things to kind of smooth a little bit of that out. In fact, I've got a little burr here. I think I might have nicked it with my carving axe. I'm just going to kind of go like that. There you go. And that's the thing about it. You know, you have a little uh, you have a little extra there. Carve it off. If you got a little nick in it, carve it off. I mean, you're not it's not a CNC machine. So, all right. So that's nice and cleaned up. And then when I go down the sides, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to go down here and I'm not sure how this grain is going to want to go, so um, I'm going to be cautious the first pass. I think it's actually wanted me to come this way, so I'm going to come this way. There we go. And I'm just kind of just kind of cornering it off. That's all I'm doing. I don't want to knock off the entire corner, um, but um, I'm just kind of cornering that off like that. And down here, I'm going to go this way. The, the grain will kind of tell you, yeah, see, I kind of went too far there, but I'm going to round these corners off anyway, too, so might as well do that while I'm here. I'm not going to round them off as much as I did the other one, but just a little bit. So I'm going to hit this side, and I think this grain is going to want me to go like this, and yes, it is. So I'm just kind of peeling that, kind of peeling that off. Up here, I gotta go like this, and then down here, I'm gonna go like this. Just a big, long string like that. And this one here, same way. Yeah, I don't want to peel that way, so I'm gonna, I am gonna have to go this way. go. All right, so I'm going to finish cleaning that up, and then on the end, you kind of do the same thing like it was on the other side. You just kind of carve straight across, like that. And depending on your piece of wood, this is kind of letting me uh, carve on the end grain. Some wood doesn't. This is being nice to me, so that's kind of cool. And there we go. So just kind of smoothing those out a little bit like that. And then the corners, I'm just going to kind of cut down like that. There we go. See, that's a little bit beveled on each side. Like that. There we go. Let me switch angles and get right back to it. All right, guys, and we're back. And so I've got basically everything beveled. And this is kind of cool. This little knot here uh, kind of made a notch there. And I dug out most of the, like, real chippy wood in there. But, you know, that's just how the wood is. These old pieces of wood, you're going to have little defects like that. And I think it just kind of adds to the cool factor. Uh, you may not, but I do. Um, what I've got here, this is a scraper. If you've never seen a scraper, this is what preceded 
sandpaper. Before they had sandpaper, this has got a sharp edge and a dull edge. And on the sharp edge, you just you just scrape like this. And what it does is this is a this is a concave where it gives uh, a um, a concave edge to the wood and just kind of smooths it out. It's got all different uh, all different angles here, and there's also a convex and a straight. But I'm just going to come in and smooth out the edges and then it'll basically be done. I might hit it with a little sandpaper, but actually this piece of wood is smooth enough to where it's probably not going to need much. So I'm just kind of going to come in and smooth out this with the scraper, and we should be done. So that's, I'll, I'll um, show you at the end what, how it turned out exactly, but uh, that's basically how you make a cutting board. There you go. Alright guys, we're back with the final project. I finished up using the scraper. You can see it just kind of bevels the edges a little bit smoother. And um, this knot I basically kind of smoothed out a little bit. And the saw marks I smoothed out a little bit. I just basically, what I'll do is I'll just run my hand up and down like this. And if I get a splinter, then I know I need uh, to do a little bit more work. But I believe that it is splinter free. And again, just look at that. Just look at how cool that wood grain is there. Especially when the light hits it. It's just really, really neat. Both sides have kind of some unique grain to them. And then again, the handle is just, uh, just so you have something to hold on to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole in it. I think I ran out of my little leather straps, uh, so I need to get a couple more of those and, um, you know, so you can hang it up. But but that's a finished product. You know, it's nothing, it's nothing fancy, but it's just a really it's a neat project and it's easy for basically a woodworker of any uh, any skill level to do because I mean mostly the woods already cut you just have to make a few a few saw marks and um, you know get a you know get a carving knife if you want I mean you could you could do it all with a draw plane or whatever you wanted to do but anyway so cool little project and I hope Eddie likes it I think he will all right thanks guys for watching on stuff Steve likes and we'll see you on the next video.